So last week, Google just went ahead and unveiled Gemini 3 Pro and this week it's time for Anthropic and just yesterday, Anthropic went ahead and launched Cloud Opus 4.5. And the thing about Opus 4.5 is that it is far way better than Opus 4.1 but significantly cheaper than Opus 4.1. And the even cooler thing is that if you're using Cursor, right now you can access Cloud Opus 4.5 in Cursor at the same cost as Sonnet 4.5. And yes, you heard it correct. For the next two weeks, I believe Cursor is running a promo or some kind of offer where the price for Opus 4.5 is as same as the Sonnet 4.5, of course, with significantly better performance. And as you can see, this right here is the official release blog post on the Anthropic website. And today in this video, we are going to explore Cloud Opus 4.5, some of its benchmark, and also actually try to use it within Cursor and Cloud Desktop, and we'll see how good is Opus 4.5. All right, so as you can see, here we have the blog post and it is our newest model Cloud Opus 4.5 is available today. And again, every time a company launches a new AI model, of course, it's intelligent, it's efficient and the best model. But in this one, they're specifically saying that this is the best model in the world for coding agents and computer use. All right. And now right to the top of this blog post, we can find the SWE bench, that is the software engineering benchmark. And as you can see, Opus 4.5 tops the chart at 80.9%, which is actually way better than Gemini 3 Pro, which was launched last week, and also GPT 5.1 Cortex Max, which was also launched last week, I believe. And again, one thing that you'll have to note here is that the range actually starts from 70 to 82. So it's not actually a lot. It might seem like there's a lot of difference, but if you look at GPT 5.1, Cortex High, it is 77.9, but it is just 80.9, but it's actually way better when compared with Opus 4.1, okay? And now if I scroll down, as for the pricing, it says pricing is now at $5 for input and $25 per million output tokens, making Opus level capabilities access to even more users, teams, and enterprises. So the idea here is that Opus is now becoming cheaper is what it seems. Of course, that's a good thing. And again, if I further scroll down, this right here is an interesting read right here. So evaluating Cloud Opus 4.5. And as you can see, it says, we give prospective performance engineering candidates a notoriously difficult take home exam. And we also test the new models on this exam as an internal benchmark. And within our prescribed two hour time limit, Cloud Opus 4.5 scored higher than any human candidate ever. So in a lot of these benchmark results, as you can see, Opus 4.5 tops the chart, specifically in agentic coding, agentic terminal coding, agentic tool use, then computer use, visual reasoning and all that, right? And again, if you want to read more about all the changes and you know, if you are a nerd, you can go through all these benchmark results in here. And right now, if you head over to Cloud AI and if you sign into your account, if you click on this model drop-down menu, of course, you can now find Opus 4.5. And again, if I open the Cloud Desktop app, there you go, here we have Opus 4.5. And again, if I open, let's say, uh, Cursor, there again, we have Opus 4.5 live already. And when I open Cursor, see this? As you can see, it says available at Sonnet 4.5 course during the first two weeks. So till December 5th, you can just use Opus 4.5 just like you would use Sonnet 4.5. And as you can see, here I opened cursor and I went ahead and gave a prompt asking Opus 4.5 to create a Minecraft style voxel game that is playable in browser using 3JS. So this right here is like an extensive prompt I gave and in just one prompt would Opus 4.5 actually built is actually, you know, surprising. So maybe I can just go ahead and open the index.html file. And there you go. This right here is the Minecraft inspired game. Or let's say you could say Minecraft kind of a browser game created by Opus 4.5 in just a single prompt. Okay. I can move around and if I want to, I can remove blocks like this. And if I want to add any blocks, well, I can add like this. Okay. And again, this right here is a grass block. Then here we have a couple more blocks. For example, let's say sand block like this. I'll select three and then stone block. Okay, maybe let's try adding it in here. Okay, there you go. Here we have store blocks and I can move around and maybe I can further dig and find water. Okay, see? And again, the cool thing is that I actually managed to build it in just a single prompt. Okay, and this right here is the current state of this Minecraft inspired game. And next up, maybe we can go ahead and ask the AI to, let's say, include the functionality to plant some trees and maybe some houses, right? So what I'll do is I'll simply open cursor again. And this time around, I'll go ahead and give a new prompt. Perfect. So it actually works. Next up, I want to add a couple more blocks. So I want to give users the ability to, let's say, plant some trees or bushes and maybe even some houses as well. And now I can click on the send button. 
okay right now we only have like a couple of these blocks for example we have the grass block then we have dirt block and stone block okay we also have the sand block and again if i click like if i do the left click it actually removes a block and if i do the right click it actually plants or let's say add a new block okay that's how it is right and again let's just wait for cursor to let's say add this uh trees and all that and while that is being done let me quickly take a second to talk about our sponsors for today's video test sprite manual testing is slow expensive and error prone and most of the teams spend 40 percent of their time just writing test cases so meet test sprite the world's first fully autonomous ai software testing agent so imagine automating your entire testing process from generating test cases and writing code to executing tests, diagnosing issues, and even suggesting fixes, all with minimal effort. It automatically generates the test code, run front-end and back-end test, debug issues, and delivers detailed report, cutting testing cost by up to 90%. To get started, you can either use the Test Sprite's web interface or the MCP tool in your IDE like Cursor or Andy Gravity. Just sign up on testpride.com by clicking the link in the description below and add testpride mcp to cursor or anti gravity now just ask the ai to run a full test using testpride within minutes it will now complete a full backend or frontend test and shows you the complete results and the best part testpride suggests fixes so that cursor or anti gravity or whatever ai agent you're using can itself fix the problem without you having to do anything you can even schedule tests on TestSprite's web interface so that it will automatically run tests for you and send the complete report to your email. So make sure to click the link in the description below and visit testsprite.com to check out the ultimate AI powered testing agent in action. Now back to the video. All right, so there you go. It seems like it's done. So here we have a couple of elements added that is wood, leaves, planks, brick and glass. Okay, I'll just go ahead and refresh. Okay. Wow, okay, this is interesting. So here we can find a lot of these trees and now I can move around and let's say, and next up we can go ahead and try to, let's say, drop uh, some bricks in here. Oops, maybe in here. Okay, there you go, here we have bricks and then I can construct the house and do all that kind of stuff. But there you go, this right here is the Minecraft game that the AI was able to generate, specifically Opus 4.5. And then I went ahead and asked Opus to create a new 3d lego style brick builder okay and that is also done and maybe i can open the index.html file and this right here is what the ai built in just a single prompt i can zoom in zoom out and there you go and i can select the brick size from here and drop it anywhere like this and then i can change the size i can change the color all right okay wow so this is also something that i built in just a single prompt in Cloud Opus 4.5 and it uses 3JS by the way. Interesting, right? So it's actually cool. So as you can see, Cloud Opus 4.5 is able to one shot a lot of stuff like this, like complex plane and all that. And you know, this 3D environment and all that is actually working fully in just a single prompt. So that's actually good. And next up, what I want to try is that I'll go ahead and ask Opus 4.5 to create a new landing page and let's see how good it is, right? So Gemini 3 Pro was actually really, really, really good when it comes to front-end side of things and the kind of landing pages that it was able to create is absolutely good, right? I just want to check if Opus is any better, like Opus 4.5 is any better. And the thing about using Claude model specifically or just about any other model other than Gemini 3 Pro is that when you give a prompt and ask it to create a landing page or some kind of front-end UI element, it will go ahead and use that purple color and obviously it screens AI. So Let's just say this writer is a gaming platform and I want it to create a landing page for the same. So I can give a prompt in here. So here I have given a prompt asking the AI to create a sleek and modern looking landing page for a gaming platform, which is this one right here. And now I'll go ahead and hit enter and let's wait for it. Hopefully I don't see any purple color kind of, or let's say how good Opus 4.5 is. All right, so the AI has managed to create the landing page and it actually created a new folder called as gaming platform. And again, here we have index, main and style files. Okay, so if you want to review, okay, everything looks good. And next up, I'll try to open the index.html file to see the output and let's see how it is. Okay, maybe I can open it up. All right, so this right here is the landing page that the AI has created for a gaming platform. And to be honest, I kind of have like a mixed feeling about it. All the phones and all that is actually really apt for a gaming platform. All these animations and stuff look good all these cards look good 
and we have that nice you know subtle grid towards the background and also that gradient colors as well the font looks nice too okay it's reasonably good is what i would say and is cloud finally getting good at front end i don't know and next up one more update before we wind up the video is that apart from cloud opus 4.5 now you can directly use Cloud code on the Cloud app on the desktop. If you open the Cloud app right now, towards the top, you now have a toggle to toggle to the Cloud code. That is the web kind of version. And then again, you can actually spin up a new agent, a local one, or let's say a cloud one. And you can start using Cloud code directly in the Cloud desktop app. And that is also one more new change along with Opus 4.5. So being able to directly use the Cloud code directly within the Cloud desktop app, I'll take that. And again, definitely make sure to check out Cursor and you can now use Cloud Opus 4.5 for the same price as that of Sonnet 4.5. And trust me, you definitely don't want to miss it. And I've been playing around with Opus 4.5 for a couple of hours right now. And it is actually really good is what I would say. And I've been comparing the outputs of Sonnet 4.5 and Opus 4.5. And there are some drastic differences and you know changes. And you'll definitely feel it when you start using the same. And again, if you want to learn more and take a look at all these benchmark results, I'll make sure to leave link to this blog post in the description below. And again, you can also try Cloud Opus 4.5 in Cloud Code and Cursor right now. I know that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in today's video. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If yes, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.